just been reading this Bill Bryson book. One of the chapters recalls going to the cinema in the 1960s. Back then a single screen cinema had 1,500 to 2,000 seats with a scoop screen 35 to 45 feet wide. He says, Facing a vast screen in the darkness was an entrancing experience. I share that memory. Cinema should be just that, an experience. A home cinema can also give that entrancing experience. But how big should your vast screen be? Firstly, the screen size should relate to the size of the room. My home cinema is about 5 metres by 2.9 metres, a width to length ratio of around 1.75 to 1, ideal for a short throw projector. This is my scope screen. The ratio is 2.4 to 1. Around 80% of films in my library are screened in this ratio and the screen is for constant height presentation. And with the masking set for 1.85, 1.78, 1.66 and 1.33. Looking back at this old projections manual, I noted this page. Factors affecting apparent picture size. And it helpfully says, To the projectionist, the screen may look small, but to the patrons in the cheap seats at the front, the screen will look quite big. Scientific stuff this, however. A useful guide is given here, and it says a standard lens on a 35mm movie camera has a focal length of 50mm, and this covers an angle of approximately 24 degrees. This is about equal to our recognition area. The manual also points out that the standard lens is used more often than any other focal length, therefore it's a good basis to find the ideal viewing distance. If you sit at the correct distance from your screen, the screen should fill that 24 degree angle. The perspective will then be correct. It suggests making a sighting device like this to find the correct viewing distance and the ideal seat in the auditorium. Too close, too far back and just about right. It's a gadget just like the dam busters used but to save you the bother I've checked it out and drawn this rough sketch. The standard camera lens sees at an angle of 24 degrees. Therefore, the ideal seat will be here where the camera filmed the scene. It works out to two and a half screen widths. But, when a times two anamorphic lens is added to the 50 mm prime lens, the screen width doubles, but the perspective remains the same. And the ideal viewing distance for the scope image is now one and a quarter screen widths. The length of throw from the projector to the screen does not affect the ideal viewing distance. Now to complicate things a little more, for non-anamorphic widescreen ratios, the 35mm projected frame is enlarged with a range of shorter focal length projection lenses and cropped to achieve the ratio required. Looking at the 185 ratio and the 24 degree angle, the ideal seat would be further back. However, I think the cameraman would use a shorter focal length lens to compose a widescreen image and this would increase the viewing angle. If the 185 image is a little too big, I can live with that. But just to clarify, all this applies to constant height projection. My large format screen is installed at the front of the stage. A little trick to make the screen appear bigger. It's a little wider and higher than the scoop. Cinerama, Todeo and IMAX are all designed for an immersive cinema experience. For these presentations, to create that immersive experience, I find the ideal seating position is about one screen width back. Well, the popcorn has popped, the disc is in the player. I've checked my ideal seating position. So let's get the show on the road. Ah, the vast screen. I think Bill would like this.